So here's a question. DAX and apps are getting better and better, but so are the cheaper ones built into dongles, phones, and laptops. So if you have something like one of these, one of the newer MacBook Pros that supposedly has an adapting headphone out, well, can it power your high-end planars? What about something like an HD 600? Let's talk about it. This is the M3 Pro 14-inch MacBook. Pro. Pretty current, and it has a headphone out that I've used for all kinds of things, even when editing without an amp. Now, not every headphone's gonna be able to do this, but certain things matter outside of just how loud it gets. What's the distortion characteristic like? And if it is really getting up to a higher volume, what kind of headroom do you have? Well, using an SPL calibrated Bruling Care 4128C head and torso simulator, I've tested this and using full range pink noise at various levels, taking frequency response and distortion measurements, I can tell you guys what works and what doesn't. Now, here's something to consider. If you listen to a headphone at say 80 decibels, you probably want another 10 to 20 dB of headroom on top of that, because while your music might be fine at 80, you're going to have bass hits and little peaks that are going to jump up where you really want some headroom. You don't want to be maxing out your amp all the time because then you're just going to be constantly in the threshold of distortion. First, let's go through the volume of the headphones I tested, then we'll talk about distortion. First things first, do the LCD2 Classic. That got up to 96 decibels of full range pink noise. Me being a person who listens in the mid 70s, 96 decibels is absolutely plenty. The HD6XX and the 600, 90.6 decibels. That's at the threshold to where I would say you technically could listen to it on the MacBook. It's not gonna be performing optimally, but you absolutely could. If you listen in the mid 70s, you're really pushing it because those peaks that are going to get up into the 90s are gonna be right there on the edge of what this thing can do. I would say at that point, you really need to use an app. Something like a Questyle M15 is a great option if you want something small form factor that can still do it on the go. DCA E3, no shot. 87.3 decibels at the absolute max. This isn't gonna power that very well. If you're listening really, really quiet, it is a closed back, so that kind of helps, but I wouldn't plug that up to the new MacBook. Just for memes, I wanted to plug up the Monhouse Tungsten to see if that could do it. 72.2 decibels max. No. Uh, from here, it only gets better though. The Lyric 2 at 92.2 decibels, kind of on the threshold, but acceptable. It's a closed back, so the isolation sort of helps. The HD 560S does really well at 97 decibels. This is more than plenty to power an HD 560S unless you listen at pretty loud volumes. For me, without getting too high on the volume of the MacBook, it still gets much higher than I regularly listen at and higher than I'm comfortable listening at. Surprisingly, D8000 Pro at 95.2 decibels peak on the MacBook, that is listenable, and that's a planar. Moondrop Para at 92.7 decibels, so that's right on the threshold again if you're listening in like the mid 70s. But the best one that I tested on this, the one that was easiest to power and was just honestly kind of effortless, is the Odyssey MM500 at 99.3 decibels. Now this one, the MM500, that was more than driven at like 30% volume. It just had no problems. That was really, really easy and got way louder than I wanted it to. And it sounded good across the board. It didn't sound like anything was lacking. The MM500 sounds great off a laptop. Honestly, as good off a laptop as it does off of a desktop amplifier. So yeah, certain high-end headphones you can really easily power off of a MacBook. I'm filming this bit the next day. I ended up getting a little bit busy. Now that we've gotten through all that, I can show you guys the distortion measurements. Now, one of these I measured on the MacBook's output. Another one I measured on the topping A90, an amp known for being really clean. This is at the same level matching the maximum volume of this MacBook. And as you can see here, huh, which one's which? I can run tests and tests and tests again, and we see little differences and wiggles across the board, but the level of distortion is the same. This doesn't appear to be adding any distortion compared to something like a topping A90. If it is, it's definitely not within the audible spectrum. Ah, back to past DMS, let's get the conclusion. But the real question is, since you can power them off a MacBook, should you? An M500, well, yeah, I think it sounds absolutely fantastic. And if the volume levels for any of these are okay, I don't see why not. I mean, don't get me wrong, any day of the week, I will take something like a JDS Labs Atom. I think that's just a fantastic little unit. I also love things like tube amps with a high output impedance because then you can kind of play around with the resonant frequency of the headphone and get, you know, maybe more of a bass tilt or a warmer sound in some cases. But the barrier to entry has changed. If you have an HD 560S or an MM500 and all you have is a MacBook, well, you really don't need to buy an amp. 
you can. I mean, especially if you're trying to listen at absurdly loud volume levels, but for everybody else, this is really all you need. And if you already have it, well, that just makes things even easier. I mean, what you're getting in this is basically a more advanced version of the little Type-C Apple dongle. A lot of people do love that thing. I know it's really popular on Reddit too. In fact, I use that thing all the time. It's a great little DAC. It's good for IEMs and it can power some headphones too. This is just like a slightly more powerful version of that that is capable of detecting impedance. Now, it didn't seem too happy with high impedance things, anything over like 200 ohms, it seemed to really struggle with, but things 150 ohms or under did pretty well. Out side of tungsten that is, but come on, tungsten, people plug that up to speaker amps, like we plug that up to this as a joke. Now, when I'm on the go, I'm still gonna use the Quest Style M15. It's just got plenty of power, it's a nice little unit, and I just don't have to worry about it, especially if I'm going to a trade show, I wanna test out a bunch of things. I'm not gonna bring a MacBook with me to go test things at a trade show, I'm gonna bring the M15 and run it off my phone. But knowing what this is capable of, it makes me wonder how much longer are we going to need dedicated headphone amps? Will there be a time in the near future where things like this are more than powerful enough for pretty much almost all our headphones. I think it's entirely possible based on how far things have come in just the last few years alone. Either way, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Do you have one of these computers sitting around? And what do you run off of it if you do? Have you ever tried it? It's actually pretty cool. As always, if you like this video, leave a like down below. A comment also letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can have the Discord or the forum, both available at the link in the video description. As always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until next one, guys. Peace.